Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, Strategic Supply Relationships. I'm going to introduce today's presenters to you in a moment, um, but then we're going to go into the first portion, which is the Supplier Management Basics. And this section is going to be based off pastry and research, um, and I'm going to take you through um, some of the recent trends we've seen among organizations in supplier management. Um, we're also going to look at those across industries. We're going to look at some of the industry-specific issues um, that companies have as well as their goals in supplier management. Um, then Determine Solutions is going to take us through their experience with supplier um, management software tools and show us how you can apply those in your supplier management practices. They're also going to take a look deeper into how you can apply those solutions across different industries. And then we're going to wrap up today's presentation with a few questions. So if you have any, keep them in mind um, and submit them in the Q&A in the Q&A chat box. So I'd like to introduce today's presenters. First, um, there's me. I'm Anna Barnett, a research associate with Paystream Advisors, and I'll be presenting Paystream's research on fire management today. We also have Sophie Pope. She is the Director of Professional Services with Determine, and they'll be giving us a software expert's um, expertise on this subject. Hi, Sophie. How are you doing today? Hi, Anna. I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm really happy to have you. All right, so before we go further, I want to make sure everyone is familiar with Paystream. Um, for those of you who aren't, uh, we are a team of experts in all things back office processes and software, and that includes um, sourcing, supply chain, procurement, accounts payable, payments, and even expense management. We use our expertise to help our subscribers and our clients in a few ways. Um, the first way is through our free research reports and tools, which are on our website, uh, paystreamadvisors.com. That's where a lot of the information I'm going to discuss today comes from. Our reports cover industry trends and adoption rates, and they profile leading solutions uh, so that practitioners like yourselves can get a glimpse of the space. Another way we help our clients is through thought leadership via speaking engagements, and we do a free webinar like this one almost every week. Um, even if you can't attend a live event, they're always available on demand on our website. The final way that we help our clients is through our advisory services. And um, this is where we help organizations plan for automation with a current state analysis and a needs assessment. Um, we help them build an ROI case for automation. We help them choose the right solution. Uh, we help them negotiate the best deal. And sometimes we will stick around for implementation and help things go smoothly from there, too. So now I'm going to turn it over to Sophie so she can tell you a little bit about Determine. So who is Determine? Um, Determine is a pioneering source-to-pay and contract lifecycle management company. We were formed in 2015 when three leaders in the source-to-pay space combined years of experience to form one new exciting organization. So if you haven't heard of Determine, then you may well have heard of one of those three organizations. IASTA bringing expertise in spend, sourcing, and supplier management. BPAC, an innovative provider in the procurement space. And then Selectica bringing contract lifecycle management experience. So our goal at Determine is to simplify business complexity. So we want to understand uh, the pain points in our customers' business process and turn these into insights. We really want to empower our customers to make informed decisions and harness that untapped power of, of their own proprietary spend, supplier, and contractual data. So we do this for over 250 global clients uh, from all walks of life and operating in lots of industries such as retail, manufacturing, transportation, healthcare, biotech, telecoms, and financial services, to name but a few. And we actually find that our customers uh, come to us to look for um, innovative technology and best practice help to help them solve the business challenges and improve operational efficiency, which leads to tangible and measurable um, impact to their bottom line. All right. Thanks very much, Sophie. Uh, once again, we're very happy to have you. So I'm going to kick off our presentation today. I'm going to go over some of Paystream's most recent findings around supplier management practices. Um, that we put together for our recent 2017 supplier management report. Um, this data was taken from our surveys, which we conducted over several hundred North American businesses across a variety of industries and market segments. Now, I first want to lay down a definition for supplier management. Um, as it's defined here, supplier relationship management entails assessing and optimizing um, a company's entire supply base according to both the strategic goals of the company and the supplier's characteristics and capabilities. I'm sure many of you are familiar with that principle. 
Um, some companies have separate departments just for managing supplier relationships, um, but most companies have guidelines in place along many teams processes and even across different locations for dealing with suppliers in a synchronized and regulated manner. And of course, the ultimate goal um, of supplier relationship management is to ensure long-lasting and mutually beneficial relationships that are maintained and compliant and financially sustainable across uh, the life cycle of your relationship with each supplier. Um, there's several sub-goals within this one definition. Um, one of those is using strategy in your supplier relationships. For example, um, a supplier manager would think, how can we build this purchasing agreement to be financially sustainable over the years? Or how can I leverage my cash flow in accordance with um, my cash flow needs and the supplier's um, needs as far as type, location, size, etc. Um, another goal, as I touched on, is to make sure that suppliers come out ahead in the relationship um, because without a strong supply chain, the buying company's position is also weakened. So companies want to choose strong suppliers and they want to support suppliers so that they can remain strong. Um, this is especially relevant if a company is working um, across global regions and maybe in countries with less stable economies and smaller suppliers. Finally, companies want to maintain control over supplier data. So this entails a lot of things. It entails supplier validation, um, their legal qualification, their certifications, um, their status, such as diversity status. It's important that um, a company make sure that they have all their suppliers registered, um, that they want to identify suppliers that qualify for things like diversity status. So improperly managing supplier data can lead to major problems for a company, um, and that means both legally and financially. So best practice is to make sure that you have the proper procedures and controls in place to ensure that supplier data is complete, accurate, and up-to-date from the beginning of the relationship and beyond. When it comes to adopting a supplier management focused um, technology solution, which I'm going to get to a little bit more in a moment, a lot of the inspiration comes from the desire to better manage suppliers, um, by primarily by grabbing a better hold over supplier information. However, not a lot of companies are using um, those systems. A lot of you in the audience, I'm sure, are using a lot of different methods for managing your suppliers and your supplier data. So we're going to jump into our first poll question because I want to get a sense of how you are doing that. Um, the first poll question is going to be what system or method do you currently use to manage your suppliers and your supplier information? And your options are um, spreadsheets, Microsoft Word or SharePoint, or some other tool like that. Um, you may have a homegrown system. You may be using um, a solution that's part of your ERP or uh, a larger vendor management system. You might have a standalone supplier management tool. You might have a tool that's part of the strategic solution suite, um, usually cloud-based, such as like a source to schedule suite. Or you might just not know, or you think you have no system in place at all. Um, so I'm going to give you a few moments to answer that question. Okay, thank you everyone for taking that poll question. Um, it looks like we have a variety of responses, which is great. Um, a lot of you are using different methods. Um, I want to talk about a couple of those options that were listed in the, the poll question about the technology that could fall into those um, methods, such as the standalone supplier management tool and uh, tools that are part of the strategic solution suite. Um, there, these are supplier networks and supplier information management systems. So we see these two tools as the most applicable and useful software tools that uh, a company could use when they're managing suppliers um, in their back office, especially when you're managing it across multiple departments, because it offers a centralized platform for you to put supplier um, data in. Sometimes these tools are bundled together, such as a supplier network that has um, supplier information management components or a supplier information management tool could be op offered um, separately. But before I get into that, first let me define them. Um, so a supplier network is a platform that allows organizations to access their supply base in real time and perform vital financial and reporting functions. Um, if anyone is using an e-procurement tool, you probably have some version of a supplier network within that, and that helps you reach out to your suppliers and manage them in that way. Um, one of their most powerful components is the self-service component, which allows the supplier 
to log in and update their profile um, and contact the buyer about issues with things like invoices, POs, and, uh, et cetera. Um, the next tool is the Supplier Information Management System. So this is a system that allows um, for the administration of all supplier-related data, um, the validation of new suppliers, supplier reporting, um, management, managing supply chain operations, and global operations. We're going to focus a little bit more on supplier information management technology today because we think that um, this is the most strategic tool that you can use to properly manage your suppliers. It also meets a lot of the goals that companies have, and I'm going to get into that in the next slide. So the figure in this slide shows some of the top goals that our survey respondents reported that they have in their supplier management processes. Um, as you can see, most companies are most focused on improving supply chain efficiency. That's 40% of respondents. That was their top goal. Followed by improving supplier validation, reducing risk, improving adherence to corporate vendor compliance regulations. Followed by improving supplier relationships. So these are the top aims of supplier management teams, of head of departments, um, a variety of roles responded to this survey. So these goals kind of go across the entire organization. And that's one reason why the value of SIM and supplier network automation is so appealing to a lot of companies because it does help to accomplish these goals with its various functionality and services. So let me go into more detail about some of the ways that supplier networks help accomplish um, companies' top management goals. Uh, first, supplier networks allow companies to gather and maintain basic supplier information and documentation. Um, they handle supplier inquiries and disputes regarding things in the back office, such as accounts payable, procurement payment issues, um, and they help companies validate payment information, sometimes process payments. Um, in, contra in contrast to a simple supplier portal in which a buyer is just communicating with existing suppliers, supplier networks also give um, organizations access to external suppliers, which can be helpful if you want to broaden um, your supply base or find a more strategic supplier to partner with um, or even leverage that tool for your sourcing um, needs. Some supplier networks are offered in league with a company that offers source to settle automation. So you can access both across across both tools. As you can see in this figure in this slide, supplier network tools are proven to achieve one of companies' um, leading goals, which is to improve supplier relationships. Um, this figure shows that 80% of companies that have adopted supplier networks report that they've improved supplier relationships with those with the tools offered in those networks. Um, they also help to improve things like supplier query response times and overall supply chain efficiency. I don't want to spend too much time on supplier networks because our main focus today is supplier information management so solutions, and this is where we really see um, the strategic companies gaining more control over their suppliers. So supplier information management software is a, is a powerful expansion of the supplier network. It is built to go beyond simply um, managing supplier activity um, and checking on things like uh, POs and invoices. It handles the more complex information and validation and reporting processes that are required when companies have large supply bases, complex supply chain operations, and um, widespread global operations. So um, supplier information management, or SIM, um, is partly an extended supplier network tool in that it's similar in form and function, but it has more dynamic features. It has more extensive services, and it um, has elements of governance, risk management, and compliance software. Um, that, sort of, that sort of functionality is vital for compliance with tax and regulatory requirements and making sure that you're maintaining validated, low-risk supplier relationships. So SIM solutions, they, they help companies store and manage all relevant materials, um, documentation and cred credentials, including things like tax forms, sustainability scorecards, um, certif certifications, qualification results, uh, risk assessments, um, watch list clearance. So the goals of SIM software, it helps to achieve improvements around supplier validation, um, reducing risk, and it helps companies improve adherence to corporate vendor compliance regulations as well. For this section, I'm going to take us a little bit further into why companies would use um, supplier information management tools. 
um, across different industry needs. All right, so this slide shows um, some industry-specific adoption rates of supplier network solutions. According to our survey results, approximately 39% of companies are using an electronic supplier network. Um, that's across all respondents. However, um, there are some variations in that across different industries. Even though a supplier network does have the ability to support some supply chain processes um, like sourcing, companies in supply chain-centric industries, such as manufacturing, engineering, construction, aerospace, they are less likely to have adopted an electronic supplier network than those in more indirect spend focused industries, such as healthcare, retail, transportation, and financial services. So Paystream Advisors believes this evidence is partly due to the fact that supplier networks are more commonly packaged and marketed in line with a P2P software platform, but it's also because supplier networks and supplier information management solutions are much better suited to the needs of industries like financial services and healthcare. Um, we're going to break down the reasons why um, in the next couple of slides, but for the most part, we're going to focus on financial services and healthcare because they do have very unique and suitable needs for supplier information management software. So we think that one reason that healthcare and financial services are more inclined to use supplier management technology is because of their specific goals. Um, as you can see here, this figure shows the goals across different industries, and some industries have a larger focus on certain issues than others. Um, many of the healthcare respondents listed that they would like to increase their supply chain efficiency um, as their top supplier management goal, followed by supplier validation and um, risk management and things like that. So the focus on supply chain efficiency in healthcare it has a lot to do with the widespread operations within these organizations. Uh, many of them are operating large campuses with many different um, sections, departments, uh, large back office. A lot of them have more than one large campus across um, entire uh, North American region, such as all of them down the, the East Coast. Um, healthcare organizations also have a high amount of indirect goods and services that they're ordering on a very frequent basis. And these goods have to be ordered and fulfilled in accordance with specific regulations. This industry is very uh, strict when it comes to reporting regulations. Um, for example, the HIPAA reporting requirements or the different um, onboarding requirements for specific medical vendors um, or medical-related services. Altogether, supplier management software like supplier networks and supplier information software helps consolidate and manage the data um, and suppliers into a system that supports supports the needs of healthcare, and that's why a lot of healthcare organizations are interested in these softwares and why um, their needs are very uh, well served by these, these software's tools. So the financial services industry is also uh, another very highly regulated industry, as is reflected in their top goal, which is to improve um, supply validation, risk management, adherence, et cetera. Because of the nature of the financial services industry, it comes under relatively closer scrutiny than some of the other industries. Um, it must also deal with compliance um, according to a lot more reporting and vendor management requirements um, if they want to pass audits. And these reporting regulations, they change often um, on an annual basis, sometimes more frequently, and a company has to do a lot to keep up with them. Um, if a company has thousands of suppliers, it can be very difficult to make sure that they have all the right information and that they have fully vetted and, and um, made sure that each supplier is compliant. Um, but they really can't afford not to. Um, they can't afford not to fully validate their suppliers. So it's very important for financial services industry to have a system in place to where they can onboard their suppliers in a compliant way, to where they can manage all the certifications so that they can see into suppliers' activity in real time and things like that. So other drivers that would push healthcare or financial services companies to adopt a supplier management tool are the pains that they experience um, in their supplier management process. And I touched on these pains a little bit in the previous slide, but I'm talking more specifically about pains that cause damage to supplier relationships. And we all know that supplier relationships are um, very important to maintain and nurture because if you have weak supplier relationships across your supply base, then you'll have issues with your supply chain, with um, other areas of your financial processes. Um, there's definitely a trickle-down effect when it comes to supplier relationships. So... When asked about the harms that financial services and healthcare companies have specifically, both of these industries listed problems that arise from poor data management um, as well as late payments as their top reasons and the top pains that cause damage there. 
Um, they also have issues with poor contract compliance, which of course can be um, a harmful uh, have harmful effects on supply relationships, especially if you find things that are wrong with your contracts or that you haven't monitored your contracts correctly um, in the long run. Um, so supplier information management as well as supplier networks, they, they both go a long way in, in, in helping manage both data, um, payments, um, contracts. We're going to get into that a little bit more, um, but right now I want to take a brief, a brief pause to go over our second poll question. For this second question, we want to know what your biggest pain points are around supplier management. Um, I'm sure if some of you fall within um, some of the industries that we covered, then you'll see very similar pain points that you can identify with. Um, the first option is verifying supplier information before getting contracts in place, um, cumbersome, cumbersome onboarding and validation processes, struggle, struggles with real-time access to supplier data, you may have bottlenecks from supplier onboarding that affects your other business processes. You may have a lack of awareness um, as far as expirations or renewals um, are, that are linked to your supplier information management. Or you might just not know what the biggest pain point is. Uh, so I'm going to give you a few moments to go over that. All right, thank you everyone for taking our second poll question. Really appreciate that. Looks like we have um, a variety of results and a lot of you are having issues with uh, managing supplier data. So that's great. Um, it's really great that you're here because we're going to teach you how to solve that. Um, and with that said, I'm going to turn it over to Sophie Pope who's going to go into more detail on how you can use supplier information management uh, to solve some of your management problems. Thanks, Anna. Um, yeah, so we've heard about some of the problems facing our customers. Um, but what are the main drivers or root causes behind these issues? Why is data management so difficult and what's causing this disconnect? Well, the biggest issue that we see actually is siloed and disparate information existing in lots of different parts or systems across the organization. Traditionally, software has been developed with a best of breed approach to deal with specific functional uh, business function or perhaps to solve a problem within that function in isolation. Companies that might have grown up through mergers and acquisitions often end up with competing and separate systems housing that information. Often, there are very common threads to those, uh, that information, particularly supplier information that is used all over the organization, but they're being used, uh, the information is being used for slightly different purposes by different people. So having these separate systems dealing with different parts of the process is going to cause this siloed effect. And what we all know that that means is that you have duplication of effort, risk of inconsistency, poor quality of data, and ultimately a lot of work on the part of the uh, supplier and also the buyer to internally collect, validate, and maintain all of that information. So at Determine, we, we do have a solution. Um, we offer a single platform, and this platform is called the Determined Cloud Platform. Instead of looking at a specific business problem in isolation, we actually consider the business process that might span the different traditional organizational divisions, and we look at the flow of information throughout the company. So while many companies might offer one or two point solutions, we actually offer a single platform that draws the user to different areas of both upstream and downstream procurement process. So the platform is built on a, on a single, robust, but highly configurable core, which consists of master data, so information that is being consistent throughout the, the platform, and metadata, which is then the specific contextual use of that application at different parts of the process. So actually, it's the determined core that makes it possible for the platform to solve these business problems for growing, particularly for growing enterprises, because we have that flexibility in design, but still can maintain the stability and robust security requirements that, that we have, have discussed. So obviously, single sign-on, all of the areas of the system have a similar look and feel that actually make it very easy to, to um, adopt across the organization. So this next slide, um, although it looks a little bit complicated, it's not, it's very easy. So this is really to show that we recognize 
that that flow of information in an organization is not linear. Um, without getting too distracted by the dots and dashes, I want you guys to focus just on that supplier's line, which is the purple line second from top. And it really shows you that, you know, there's lots of different touch points with the supplier information, which pulls information from different parts of the process and feeds into different business processes within the organization. So the important thing is that it's actually no longer acceptable to consider supplier information management in isolation. We have to consider the impact and relationship of that supplier at all activities across the organization where that information is needed. So let's talk about some specific industry examples. Um, I'm going to start off with, with looking at financial services, and then we're going to move on to um, the healthcare industry, because these, again, as we've mentioned, are industries that really need that um, robust onboarding experience to, to maintain compliance for their organizations. So let's start off with the financial services. There are lots of contributing factors that will make up quite a complicated compliance and risk landscape for supplier management. Obviously, you have federal and industrial regulations, which often change, as, as Anna mentioned, particularly depending on political activity. And non-compliance to that can cause substantial risk to the organizational profit and also the ability to operate. So, there's a need also to minimize financial crime, fraud, money laundering, but there's also a, a, a real threat of cybercrime, so data security is becoming increasingly important. And it doesn't actually stop at whether people can access your data, but it's how sure are you that your supplier's data is protected and their suppliers and so on. There's also um, strong competition from fintech companies which means that financial services have to really drive operational efficiency as well as minimizing that risk to ensure um, compliance. So that sounds like a tough job, but actually it's not when you break it down into its component parts. So just to be clear, the focus of this case is really improving supplier validation and risk assessment at onboarding specifically. There are obviously very strong links to contractual management, which I'll talk, to, talk about a little bit later. But the goal is to improve efficiencies and make it easy for suppliers and make the data safe. So let's focus on risk and compliance. When suppliers are invited to register within um, a, a customer platform, the determined cloud platform, that supplier will carry an inherent risk. And that risk can actually be quantified based on asking some simple questions. Now, we didn't want to create a bottleneck to suppliers into the system. So suppliers can actually register themselves providing basic information via a link found on the company's website. So minimizing the admin burden on the organization itself. But the important point here is control. So six questions were asked internally, upfront, and they'll automatically generate an inherent risk posed by that supplier. That risk is largely categorized on the provider's access to customer financial information, but also along with some other elements, like the type of provider they are. Once that risk is assigned, um, and you can see it in a very kind of clear, low, medium, or high traffic light system, the supplier's onboarding process workflow will be automatically planned for them by creating a series of certification rules and criteria. So a clearly designed workflow based on responses to given questions and predefined rules. Now, what this does is it generates a series of dynamic questionnaires that can ultimately collect the right information um, and, and um, such as certification, insurance, legal forms, et cetera, and route them to the right reviewer at the right time. We can also incorporate third-party risk into the process. So integrate with partners such as um, Dun & Bradstreet, Ecovardis, Experian, and that means that validation of that provided information can be done as we go. We then have a third major point of control. And again, this could be automated, but a lot of people opt actually to engage a subject matter expert to validate the information at this point. So for example, your InfoSec team will be routed to the specific set of information covering information security, etc. So 
these reviewers, their job at this point is actually to make a judgment on what steps that organization has taken to mitigate those inherent risks. And what happens is you actually end up with a combined and weighted risk based on that inherent risk of the company and the mitigated risk through actions taken to minimize that initial risk. So you get one score for the supplier, but of course you can see at each stage where that information has come from. And as no system is, is linear or standalone, it's really important to understand the continual monitoring effect and what happens when things change in an organization. So this slide, and don't worry, you can get a copy of the, the deck afterwards. You don't need to read it all now. But this slide is really just to show a handful of the benefits that we were able to deliver through the Determined Cloud platform. So the beauty of the situation, as I mentioned, is that reviewers are only engaged when they are needed and not when they're not saving time. Suppliers also love it because they've got a single straightforward portal and they can clearly see where they are in the process. Um, they can also have reminders such as, you know, certificates are going to expire and they need to, um, they need to upload them. So as Anna was talking about earlier, it's about empowering the supplier to be able to control their own data, but in a format that allows you to get what you need from that relationship. So the organization has full audit trail of the process, can search the data, can check on compliance numbers, can run reports at any time. There's also user-specific dashboards with personal to-dos that are really obvious to make the management of the system very easy. Even you can trace who's holding up the process with a particular reviewer. And if that person isn't available, we do have delegation so that that, um, that task can be re uh, rerouted to someone else. So the most important thing, actually, the most important takeaway here is that our implementation approach focused on coaching and teaching the organization to be able to make change as needed. So the customers can change their own configuration. You can ad hoc, um, you can send ad hoc certification requests when they're needed and when regulations change. So for example, there's new uh, general data protection regulation that's going to be released in March 2018. Obviously, hope everyone is ready for that. But if you do need a single shot um, or new certification required, it's actually very easy to do. So customers can, can send out and monitor adherence to new legislation and also control their own workflow. So let's look at another example. So the healthcare industry. Obviously, there is a huge compliance and regulatory requirement for onboarding suppliers in the healthcare space. And of course, this is going to vary depending on the type of organization you are, services, insurance, um, hospitals, etc. But you've got to not only deal with the privacy of patient data, as um, with HIPAA and other compliance legislation that Anna mentioned earlier, but also the laws that come with care provision itself. So insurance credentialing for healthcare providers is pretty rigorous. Standards and regulation around goods and equipment and requirements based on the physical location as well. So Really, in summary, there are lots of different types of information that need to be captured. Um, and, you know, you would need to have a very powerful business process engine in the platform to make sure you can make sense of what needs to be collected from whom and when. All of this, again, leads to a strong need for compliance, due diligence, traceability. And there's also a clear need to collect contractual data flowing into the organization, which may come in the form of individual physician contracts, for example. The supplier data flowing from onboard, onboarding process, uh, directly links and flows into the contracts created by the organization. So ultimately, the supplier in supplier management now does just not only apply to suppliers in a traditional sense, but it also provides, it also um, applies to providers, partners, and any other organization that, um, that you might do business with. So just a quick example, if you're about to uh, contract with a provider, and obviously is a legal requirement to have uh, W-2s and W-9s, 
wouldn't it be nice to, to know for a start that you can go into your system and the information is already there because of this robust onboarding system? And not only to know that it's there, but to have to, to be able to search and find it very easily without holding up the contracting process. So again, just to bring it back to some of the ven- benefits uh, that we're able to realize for customers, there is one more important link that I want to mention uh, when it comes to supplier or provider management. So there are strong touch points that we've talked about with supplier master data from the onboarding process that flows into contracts. And with those contracts, they're going to be SLAs that are used to dictate the relationship between the two parties. Performance of those same suppliers or providers needs to be measured against the SLAs in their contract. So again, it's not a linear flow of information. Individual SLAs can actually be converted into performance metrics and fed into scorecards that you can use to measure the performance of those suppliers even after um, onboarding has happened and as business as usual. So you can not only create your metrics, scorecard categories, evaluate suppliers um, as most supplier performance management systems do, but you can also pull metrics from a contract to evaluate suppliers against those measures. And if you have downstream procurement enabled in the platform, you can also collect actual receiving information against your own POs and feed quantitative performance data into your scorecards. So you've onboarded your suppliers, you've contracted with them, and now you want to be able to see a score for that supplier based on all of these inputs and measure their performance over time. You might also want to compare suppliers to other suppliers in perhaps the same category and compare their performance too. So because you have this common data element throughout, that is now possible. So in conclusion um, for the last slide, I just wanted to show you a, a snapshot of what supplier data can actually look like and does actually look like. So through managing the onboarding process, through creation of scorecards, periodic evaluation, and importantly, from linking information from other parts of the platform, this data can now be used to monitor that compliance, highlight any risk that needs to be addressed, allow you to take the right actions, um, and allow you to make better decisions for your own business. So this is the ability to tap into your own data and drive better decisions and improve operational um, efficiency whilst minimizing risk to the organization. Great. Thank you so much, Sophie. That was a lot of um, really valuable material. We really appreciate you giving us your time and your expertise today um, to go over this topic. Now, we have a few minutes left for questions, and I received a few questions during the event, um, during our presentation, and I want to tackle a couple of them. Um, The first one is from um, Timothy. He wanted to know how do we combine supplier management and supplier performance to ensure that unsuitable companies are eliminated from our database. Sophie, what what do you what do you think about that? So I think this is this is a really important point, and there's two parts, I guess, to this. So initially, you know, you need a robust system to make sure that you're covered in your contract for the right kind of measures um, and how you want your suppliers to behave. Um, Post-contract, like execution, it's about ongoing monitoring. So if you do have the ability to pull um, metrics back into your scorecard, you need to make sure that you're having regular reviews and you're collecting the right data. Often when you have a um, supplier management system, what it, what it does is it will give you tangible results to have your quarterly business reviews. And sometimes your expectations might be misaligned with your customer, uh, with your suppliers. So you might think that they're doing really poorly, but actually they may think they're doing really well because they don't understand the rules of the game. So having things like um, 360 degree um, reporting, opening up to your suppliers to make sure that they understand how you're measuring and monitoring them is really important to open those conversations to say, okay, well, look, here's the actual evidence. Let This is what we see and this is how we see your performance. And obviously, over time, you know, that gives you the platform to be able to improve their relationship, 
But ultimately, if they're not, you also have um, the, the evidence and the justification to move away from them. So it's, it's about managing the process and giving you facts to be able to make those decisions over time. And I think the other thing is um, dispute management. So when you do have a, a supplier that is uh, causing problems or is a no-go list, you know, you need a mechanism to ensure that that, ha that information is passed on to all um, of the different uh, parts of the system or the different people that are going to be engaging with those suppliers. So that's another important point where you can dispute, um, you can manage disputes or you can flag, you know, problem suppliers um, for, for other areas of the business like payments and, and um, you know, further kind of downstream processes. Yeah. Um, great. Thank you. All right, so I got a couple questions um, for our last couple minutes. I got a couple questions around onboarding. Um, one is from mm -hmm. Rebecca. She wanted to know how do you ensure that suppliers will actually go through the onboarding process. It's a great question. What do you think? Yeah, that's yeah, that's a really good question, and that's a question that we got get asked a lot. So, you know, the the important thing is to um, to understand what your goals are for onboarding. Um, if you understand what your goals are, then you can um, you can sort of create a strategy to target the particular suppliers, um, you know, in in a way that makes sense. So, you know, we see a lot of people segmenting um, suppliers so that you know how you want to communicate with them. Maybe a, a sim simple mail shot is is good for a lot of suppliers, but the key strategic suppliers, you might want to have a little bit more of a white glove approach. So you, might, you want to split up the suppliers and work out your strategy for communication. Um, and then when it comes to actually getting them involved, there's, there's a couple of ways that you can do this. So you need adequate training and, and advice. You need to have a forum where they can contact you. You also have, need to have a really easy-to-use platform. If it's difficult, complicated, and they don't know what they're doing, they're not going to use it. It's as simple as that. Um, you also need to, to measure the um, onboarding over time, obviously. And we also see some quite um, nice techniques to actually um, onboard suppliers. And I call it... Um, onboarding rewarding, which I'm sure I've made that term up, but I haven't made up the principle, which is basically to entice your suppliers um, to onboard with the system by rewarding them somehow. So it might be, um, you know, if they're onboarded or, or they've completed all their compliance documents, you might give them slightly better payment terms or you might reward them with other features such as a PO flip at the end of the process. So there are things that you can do to um, entice suppliers on board. And of course, you know, this is particularly true with, with strategic sourcing. Um, you need to make sure that the rules of the game are very clear. So for suppliers, you know, if they do not on board, then they do not get POs. And you can have more of a heavy-handed heavy approach where it comes to, you know, it's this way or nothing. And the more you allow suppliers to um, go around the system, the more they will. So you need to have a well thought out strategy for the suppliers that you want to onboard. That might mean phasing it. You also need some rewards. Monitoring, obviously, is really important. And then constantly um, measuring and, and communicating with those suppliers. So, you know, mail shots, um, you might have, you know, phone calls for the more strategic ones. You might hold workshops, webinars, those kind of things. Just don't give them any excuse to, um, you know, that, that they, they didn't get it and that it wasn't easy to use is, is my main kind of advice for that one. Sure, yeah. Uh, along the same line, what, this is from Regina. She wanted to know what are some of the measures of um, a successful onboarding and how would you quantify them? Okay, well, um, your measures, there's obvious ones, of course, but your measures are um, generally should be linked to your goals. So what is the purpose of the onboarding? Is it to get everyone on the system so that you can pay them, you know, using P2P? Or is it because you've got a particular um, area of compliance that you need to get legislation or, um, you know, confidence that the, that the suppliers are adhering to up front? So... It depends on the goals, and then once you know your goals, you'll know how to measure. So most, well, a lot of good tools like ours 
actually have inbuilt um, KPI um, uh, measures that, that will automate the, the um, monitoring process for you. So you could be able to know, you know, the total number of suppliers that are, are logged in against the initial um, invitation list or, or initial suppliers that are in perhaps prospect mode. So you can clearly see, okay, I've got X percent that have onboarded for these different categories, etc. You also want to look at the supplier's um, commitment to the system over time. So it's about measuring, you know, are, are they using the system, not just the single um, onboard um, process in the beginning. And that really is, is driven by um, the benefits that the suppliers see from this. So either it's an easier way to do business with your organization, um, or it's that they can see actually that this is, you know, this is an easy way to do business. So um, the measures will obviously be relating to the number or percentage that are being onboarded, but also look at the compliance numbers that you have. So how many requests are you having um, for suppliers at the end of the process that have somehow maverickly circumvented the process? You know, those are the numbers that you can look at as well. And actually getting feedback from the teams um, and from the suppliers themselves as to how well they, they find it adopted. You know, you, you can often start off with a small pilot group and say, you know, I'd like to collect the, um, you know, your in, input so that we can further fine tune the system. And all of that good stuff will, will lead to a picture of how well you feel the onboarding process is done. Yeah. All right. Great. Thank you, Sophie. Um, so that's all the time we have for today. If anybody else had any questions that we didn't get to, um, either in the chat box or just now, then we will email you with your with your answer. Um, feel free to reach out to us at any time with more questions about this topic or about your CPE certificate, um, especially if you're having trouble downloading it or printing it or anything like that. Um, I want to thank Sophie Pope once again for joining us and for sharing your your insight thank into this topic. And thanks, everyone, for um, giving us an hour of your time today. I hope you have a great afternoon and that you join us on future webinars.